You may have been writing CSS for a long time, but the chances are that after a while, things start to get messy, really difficult to change, and rendering the page actually becomes slower, perhaps without you even noticing. Well, let's cover BEM and how this might help you. So BEM is a naming convention for CSS. And despite it looking quite messy sometimes, it's actually extremely easy to learn and the benefits go a long way. So first, we're gonna cover what BEM looks like and then we'll dive into the benefits. So first of all, what does BEM stand for? Well, the B in BEM stands for block. And then the E in BEM stands for element. And then the M is the modifier. Now you'll mostly use the block and elements when defining classes, but modifiers, although they're used less, are actually equally as useful. So let's just step back and take a look at how you might be writing CSS at the moment. And honestly, I have to say there's nothing wrong with this. I've done it, everyone's done it, and I'm not saying it's the end of the world. However, as we're writing out the code that we're going to do in a moment, we'll look at some of the problems that we'll face as our project possibly grows larger. And we've all been there where we've written CSS and eventually we get into just a big mess. So let's get rid of this. We know what BEM stands for now. And let's head over to app.css and take a look at an example of how we might write CSS out. So let's say we have a user avatar. We obviously define an avatar class and then we go ahead and give it some properties. So for example, we might have a border radius of 20 pixels and we might have a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. Let's just change this to 100% actually. Okay, so let's say we wanted to place this avatar on our top navigation. This might be used for, say, a blog post or a forum post or something like that. Well, we may say nav.top and then we might say avatar. So we're saying an avatar within our top navigation perhaps has a different width and a different height to it. So we define these styles out like so. So now we decide, oh, actually, we need an avatar in the bottom navigation when a user signed in. So we say nav.bottom and then we say avatar and then again we define out a different width and a height so say it's 40 pixels this time instead but now we decide well on the bottom navigation we want the avatar to possibly have a grayscale so this could be some kind of modifier depending on something so we could then say nav bottom avatar dot grayscale so this would be an avatar on the bottom navigation with an additional grayscale class and then perhaps we could use a css filter on this to filter it 80 percent grayscale so you might be thinking well there's nothing wrong with this at all but what's actually happening here is one you're tying this down to certain elements so you're being very specific about where these elements are styled let's say that then we want to move this avatar and we want to place it somewhere else. Well, we've tied this down to nav bottom now and we can't really do that. Of course, what we can do is we can say avatar dot small or dot large or something like that. But again, this kind of gets a little bit messy. And at the moment, we're just talking about a very simple component. We're not talking about layouts. We're not talking about uh, reusable modules. We're just talking about a single component that we want to look different in different places. And actually glancing at this code, does it look obvious exactly what's going on? To me, it looks a little bit messy. Now the other problem here and one way BEM can help us is these kinds of selectors are actually very slow. They're very expensive within CSS to actually render this. So we're going to take a look at BEM and how we can actually make this look a lot more readable to you or anyone else that looks at your code. And we're going to see how this will improve speed, how it will improve the way we work, our general workflow. More importantly, how we can reuse components. And using BEM will actually make our HTML look a lot more readable as well. We'll have very, very specific modules that at a glance will just look very, very simple to understand. Right, so we know the downfalls of working with CSS like this. 
So how is BEM going to jump in and save the day? Well, let's head over to the next video and we'll start using the BEM methodology.